In this video we're going to do an experiment to discuss alpha and to really make sure that you have a good feeling for what it means. And what I'm going to be doing is recreating some of the old hypothesis tests. Believe it or not, some of the developments in statistics and inferential statistics and hypothesis testing come from testing psychic abilities. And so in this experiment, what I'm going to be doing is flipping a coin 10 times. And we're going to be testing this idea of do I have psychic abilities or not. And so let, let's talk about what should our null hypothesis be. Uh, if I flip a coin 10 times, then the null hypothesis should be the least interesting status quo statement that we can make. Another way to think about it is if I'm trying to demonstrate that someone does have psychic abilities, start by assuming that they don't. And then your job is to come up with evidence that they do. And so we're going to see how an experiment like this just happens and do a hypothesis test in this case. So what would we expect to happen? Well, the null hypothesis should be that I don't have psychic abilities. And so null hypothesis let's say that out of 10 flips what should happen we could say that either the probability is equal to 0.5 the true probability of all flips and all experiments so we could say the probability is 0.5 or we could say that uh, the average number of flips that I guess correctly out of 10 should be 5 so let's we'll phrase it that way so average 5 out of 10 correct. That's what we should expect to happen. So that's the null hypothesis. Now the alternate hypothesis would be that the average is not, some, not 5 out of 10. So not equal to 5. And I would have psychic abilities if we could demonstrate either that the average is something larger than 5 or something less than 5. If we could show that, demonstrate that convincingly that in a, on the long run, I guess either more than 5 or less than 5 out of 10. Now you might be asking yourself, why in the world would you be psychic if you always guess none of them right? Well, if you have someone who is perfect at never guessing things right, that's just as good as having someone who is perfect at guessing right all the time because you just ask your friend what's going to happen and then you guess the opposite. So either way, psychic. So let's get started here. And again, the, the whole idea of hypothesis testing is to see can you come up with enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, to be convinced that the results you're seeing are not just random, that there is some underlying truth as um, John Venn put it, we're looking to, when you say something is statistically significant, meaning you reject an all hypothesis, you're looking to see if there is something permanent. That's what significant means, is, is, or rejecting an all hypothesis. Is there something permanent un, and underlying about this experiment uh, that is different from what the null hypothesis says? So let's get started. What I'm going to do is flip this coin 10 times, and I'm going to guess each time before I flip it. Uh, to see what happens. Now I'm going to guess this first one is going to be tails. So let me flip it and see. And the first one is tails. So let me record it here um, that it is correct. And let me guess the uh, second one here. I'm going to guess the, the second one also tails here. And the second one is tails also. So let's see. Correct. Okay. Now third one, I'm going to guess heads. And the third one is heads. So let's see. Uh, that correct as well. And OK, experiment trial number four. Um, this one also heads. And that one is heads. So let's see. Correct. Now fifth go, um, tails That's my prediction. And that one is tails, and you know if you don't believe me, here you go. See, I don't think you can really see that, but that that was tails also. So uh, let's see, 
Correct. Um, well, okay, well, Law of Large Numbers, this will start working out here eventually. Um, I didn't predict that one, let's see. Uh, this one, Tails, okay. And that one's Tails as well, so let's see, correct. Okay, so this, so when we calculate this p-value, um, it'll be fine. Um, sorry, heads, this one's going to be heads, so let me flip it. And that one was heads, if I can find my quarter, okay, there we go, yeah. Before it fell, it was heads, so let's see. Correct so on that one. Okay, we got three more chances. This this always happens in my classes, but things work out in the long run. It's okay. Um, I didn't guess again. Okay, this one's going to be tails, and that one tails. Okay, that's fine. And um, number nine. Um, tails. And that one's tails, okay. Okay, one one chance to have some interesting thing to calculate here. And this one's gonna be heads. And that one is heads. Okay, so okay, well that's that's fine. Um, you know, we're doing a hypothesis test, things happen. So now that we've collected our data, we need to evaluate um, should we reject or not reject this null hypothesis? And in order to do so, we need to calculate a p-value. No, wait, no, no, we don't. No, we don't. Now, you have to make up your mind. There's, you know, we don't really have to. We're going to calculate some things, but we don't have to calculate. If if this was your evidence that ten in a row, uh, what are you going to do? Except, sorry, not except. We don't like that language, but fail to reject the null hypothesis that really in this experiment there was uh, I should have gotten 5 out of 10 in this experiment or that it wasn't really going to be equal to 5. Well, you would reject the null hypothesis. Uh, I hope that you would reject the null hypothesis. Now why? Well, let's go back through what you were thinking as we went through this. Now, let me just do the numbers 1, 2, 3 so we can, we can calculate some probabilities here, kind of like p-values. And uh, now, what was the probability that I got the first one right? Well, it was 0.5, right? Nothing shocking about the fact that I got the first guess right. You weren't surprised. Now, the second one right, that I got the second one right was also 0.5, but two in a row is 0.5 times 0.5, so the probability 0.25. Now, nothing shocking there. What's the probability that I could guess three in a in a row correct? Well, 0.5 cubed, so equals 0.5 to the third power, 0.125, 12.5% chance that I could guess three in a row correct. And again, nothing shocking. People guess three correct in a row all the time. But let's fill out the rest of these probabilities. It's going to be equals 0.5 raised to the... Um, fourth power in that case. And let me copy that down and we can have a little bit closer look at this. Now, nobody would reject the null hypothesis after seeing the evidence of the first flip or the second flip. And I hope no one would reject the null hypothesis after the first, after the third flip. Because the probability that what we're just seeing is random and the null hypothesis is still true, 12.5%. And so your p-value would be 12.5%, or 0.125. And you don't reject null hypotheses with a p-value of 0.125. Now, some of you might have started to think that something was odd, non-random, and either that I was psychic or that I was lying to you or that, wow, this is weird. Some of you, after the fourth flip, might have rejected the null hypothesis, saying this is a trick, this is a trap. Well, I was really lying to you, and I was having a hard time not laughing, because actually the first four in a row I got wrong. But anyway, now, if you left me, if you rejected the null hypothesis after the fifth flip, then maybe your inner alpha is 0.05, because the evidence showed you that there was only a 3% chance that what was going on was random, and if you rejected the null hypothesis after the fifth flip, then your inner alpha tells you when things start to smell like uh, there's less than a 5% chance that something 
you know, that this is random, you detect something funny is going on and you don't believe the null hypothesis anymore. Now, some of you might have stuck with me until after the sixth flip. And if you did, maybe your inner alpha is 0.02 because the p value, the probability that it was just randomness, was only 1.5%. And so you have an inner alpha, a willingness to be tricked up to the 2% level, but not beyond that. Now, if you stuck with me until after the seventh flip and then you decided something funny was going on, then maybe your inner alpha is 0.01. And so I hope no one stuck with me until after the tenth flip. Hopefully you started to either think that I was psychic or I was lying to you. But this gives you an idea of where an alpha of 0.05 or 0.1 comes from because you know when to call BS.